Hey hello there everyone, my name is Anthony and welcome to the summary of episode 1 to 20 of my Iron Man series on Old School RuneScape. I've been playing on my Iron Man account for 3 months now and I think it's time to look back at what I've achieved so far. The video you're about to see contains over 500 hours of Iron Man gameplay. I will show you all the highlights of my series so far so you will remember what I've been through. If you're a new viewer, you might want to consider watching the actual episodes instead, but I leave that up to you. If you enjoyed this video to the end, feel free to leave a like, comment or even subscribe. It took me a very long time to make this video and a very long time to make all the episodes, so it's much appreciated if you would leave a like. Thank you already for watching and let's move on to the adventure now. It all started a few days before the official Iron Man update was released. The Old School RuneScape team showed on a stream that it was actually possible to complete 99% of the tutorial already before the Iron Man update. I took advantage of this and started training my skills on Tutorial Island so I could leave it immediately after the update was released with a lot of skills at level 3 already. That was a very nice head start to have. On 13 October 2014, the day of release, I turned my account into an Iron Man and started my adventure. The first goal a lot of people had was completing the waterfall quest right away. I actually wanted to do the same, but I decided to get up my hit points first, because I didn't want to get one hit by must giants or fire giants. I got my hit points up to level 13 to complete the quest, but even after doing this I almost got killed. I was out of food and a must giant almost managed to kill me. Fortunately, I survived. I completed the quest and got my attack and strength to level 30 and 31. Okay. Nice combat stats, but little low HP. I wanted to do something about that, so I decided to complete Witch's House. This got me to level 25 hit points. I made some money by collecting steel plate legs in the wilderness and spent this on runes. I started killing fire giants, hoping to get that rune scimitar on the very first day. To be honest, I was quite lucky. After just a few kills, I got myself a rune scimitar. Unlike most other players, I managed to get one on the first day. Now that I got my rune scimitar, I thought it was time to complete some attack boosting quests to get it to level 40. I completed Trignum Village and Fight Arena to make this happen. I started training Slayer with my scimitar and got a Minotaur task. Lucky enough, I received my first easy clue scroll in just a few kills. The reward was actually quite nice. I got a green elegant shirt. I know it's just a cosmetic, but hey, it's a rare. I continued training Slayer and I reached rank 1 in the highest course. I know it didn't mean a lot at that time, but it was just cool to show off. Then I got a cave slime task and made myself an oil lantern to enter the Lumbridge Swamp to complete this task. After I got level 25 Slayer, I decided to go back to the Fire Giants again to go for another Ruin Scimitar. Would be very nice to have another one, to elk for money for example. Lucky enough, I did manage to get another one. It was just unbelievable. Someone advised me to kill some lava dragons they would have very nice loots. I decided to give it a try and I got some very nice drops indeed, like a looting bag, crystal key and a rune axe. I opened the crystal chest, but unfortunately I only got a dragon stone. Alright, it was time for the next challenge. I wanted to complete the Dragon Slayer quest to get even more combat XP. To start it, you need at least 32 quest points, and that is why I completed some useful and easy quests to achieve this amount. Merlin's Crystal for the Excalibur, the Restless Ghost for some prayer experience, and just some easy quests to get more points. To prepare for the fight against Alvark, I made myself some Rings of Recoil, very useful if I say so myself. I defeated the Dragon, achieved level 47 strength and 38 defense, and got to combat level 53. I went back to the Lava Dragons and got level 55 magic. I alked loot for money and started training Slayer again. I grinded the skill a lot and got many levels. During the Slayer training I also got my first medium clue scroll. Unfortunately the loot was not great. Better luck next time. I got another medium clue scroll that had a lot of requirements, but I didn't want to drop the clue, so I grinded all the requirements I needed, and um, let's just see how that went.
After all this work, I finally completed the clue and I got a power emmy. It's not the best item, but if you think about it, it's not that bad, especially on such a low level. I finally had a new goal for my series. I decided to base everything on training Slayer and completing clue scrolls. Whatever clue I will get in the future will be completed, no matter how hard the requirement is to get. There are just a few exceptions. If the clue requires a clue reward that I don't have, I will be forced to drop it. Also, when a requirement involves a high Slayer level, I will drop it. Because in this case it's a waste to keep my clue scroll instead of dropping it. Because while training Slayer I get plenty of clues. I continued training Slayer and it went very well. I achieved level 50 in the skill already. That's very nice. During a task of Pyre Finds I got a medium clue scroll. A clue scroll with just an unbelievable reward. I got a Bando's Cloak, which is very useful in the God Wars dungeon. It was a really coincidence because I was just planning to go to this place. I started collecting ecumenical keys to make some money. In the end I got two of them. I decided to do something different. What about a new challenge? My account got better and better and I made a lot of money. I thought it was time to get a dragon scimitar. I completed the Grand 3 quest and started Monkey Madness, which I completed in about 75 minutes. The boss was not that difficult to defeat, but I really had to watch my prayer, I almost ran out of points. The experience reward got me to level 60 attack, 50 defense and 71 combat. That means I was high enough to go to a new Slayer Master, Cheldar. But before I could go to this Slayer Master I needed to complete the Lost City quest first. I bought a Dragon Dagger, poisoned it and started training Slayer again. I got a lot of Slayer levels and I was really aiming for that first hard clue. I never got one before and the loots are just very useful for Iron Man accounts. Even on my jelly task I was not lucky enough to get a clue or a room full help. On my first blue dragon task I actually managed to get my first hard clue scroll and that was very interesting. To complete the clue I needed a room full help, blue dragon eye chaps and a fire battle staff. I already had the battle staff but I had to train my crafting to make myself blue dragon eye chaps and I needed to be lucky enough to get a room full helm drop. I also needed to be able to wear the full blue dragon eye chaps. I started training with ranger to get a level 50. Then I tried to get the room full helm drop. Um, I killed some lava dragons but I only managed to get a kite shield. Then I tried jellies again and lucky enough I actually got the helm after a few kills. I started training crafting by making unpowered orbs. At level 55 I made myself a ring of wealth. I continued training my crafting to level 65 and also completed Gertrude's cat. I wanted to complete the evil day of subquest to be able to boost my crafting to level 68 with spicy stews. This way I could get my chaps a little quicker. After all this grinding I finally had it done. The chaps were made and I was able to complete the clue. The reward? I prefer don't talk about that. I got a rune full hell, an item that I needed to complete the clue. A rune axe, 8k cash and a mage longbow. It's not the best reward but I did complete my first clue and I got a lot of requirements out of the way. So in the end, definitely worth it. I started to work on a new goal. Since I trained Slayer so much, it was very important to get a black mask. The requirements to get one are on a normal account no problem at all. But on an other man that's slightly different. I needed to complete the Cabin Fever quest and that took me a while. Let's just see what I had to do to complete this quest. When I finally completed all the requirements, it was time to kill Cave Horrors until I would get the Black Mask. I didn't know that it was going to be so hard to get one though. 
In total I killed 1329 cave horrors to get the black mask. On my journey I did get some clue scrolls, so I will show you the rewards now. This was the first clue scroll that I was not able to complete. I needed a vestment stole and a rune heraldic shield, and these are actually clue items, so I had to drop this one. And there I got my first clue item requirement, a rune heraldic shield. I finally made myself a slayer helmet. It was time to get back to slayer again. I will show you now what I achieved during this training. How amazing is this? First it took me 1329 kills to get one black mask and now I get in 10 kills two basilisk heads. That is just unfair. If you want to see it, this is a very quick overview of my bank in this stage of my account. After all this training I wanted to get a new item to boost my strength, the Rune Defender. I entered the Warrior Guild, killed hundreds of Cyclops and got one. Ok, once again I went back to do some Slayer. I will show you my progress here. I got a clue scroll that requires level 68 fishing to complete. I got a coordinate clue that required me to go into the Karazi jungle, so I needed a lot of requirements for that. After completing the Karazi jungle clue, I got another requirement. I needed level 71 crafting to make myself a blue dragon hide body, so I boosted my stats and made one. I achieved combat level 85 and that means I could go to Neve to get tasks from her. I got another clue that needed a requirement. I needed to access the Pyramid Plunder minigame. So I completed the quests I needed to and that is what I did. And again, I got myself an amazing reward. At this point I played 11 days, 11 hours and 16 minutes. In total that's 275 hours and 16 minutes. I thought it was time to kill my first boss, well, let's say semi-boss. The crazy archaeologist, my new target. I got some pretty amazing loot here. I even got a mysterious emblem, which is an amazing loot. I used it to buy a ring of wealth scroll, to enchant it and have a double chance of getting clues in the wilderness.
I decided to charge my Ivan staff to use it against the crazy archaeologist. It hits quite hard. Then I got a clue scroll with a very annoying requirement, a coordinate clue in the Elven City. This requires at least level 53 agility with a boost and partial completion of the Regicide quest. But by now you must know me, of course I was going to get that requirement. When I finally was at my destination, I found out that I forgot to bring an anti-poison, which is very recommended there. I almost died, but fortunately I made it back to a safe place just in time. I completed the clue and got a pretty nice reward actually. I got a rune crossbow drop, which is really essential to have in an Iron Man. I started making some progress towards my Barrow's Gloves. I made it to Dragon and that is quite nice already. I set myself a new goal. I wanted to play the Barrow's minigame to get myself some Barrow's gear. I completed the quest Shades of Morton, which is very useful for Barrow's. I also trained my defense up to level 70 to be able to equip my Barrow's items right away for once I get an item. I trained my Herblore a little bit to make myself some prayer potions. In total I had about 100 Renars ready to be used. I finally started doing the Barrow's minigame. After 17 chests I got an elite clue with unfortunately a very high requirement, level 65 Herblore. I decided to drop the clue because this would otherwise take too long and would not be efficient. I got 24 chests dry at Barrows, no single item, but loot number 25 was just amazing. My first ever Barrows item was a Gotham Spear. After getting this Gotham Spear, my luck just didn't want to end. After a few more chests, I got a Torak Plate Body. The loot I got after that was just insane. I was about to loot the chest, but before that, the Torak brother had to be killed. And I was in a funny mood, so I asked the brother to give me his legs. And that actually happened. Um, I sent my clip into Spark Mac Live, and I was actually chosen. So it was really amazing to see that. After 60 loots, I decided to go back to Slayer again and take a break from Barrows. But even there, my luck did not want to stop yet. I killed a Black Demon and got a Shield Left Health drop. I have checked the rarity of this drop and I first believed the chance was 1 out of 200,000. This is however not the case. If my sources are correct, the chance of getting this item is 1 out of 4,000. Still not bad if you ask me. Once again I grinded more Slayer experience. I got loads of blue scrolls and drops while training, so I will show you what I got. I train my woodcutting and fletching to level 55 to make myself some road bolts.
I got a medium glue scroll and I was sent from a king to a jungle man. I never thought it would be a good reward, but um, let's just see. I got an armadillo stole reward and that is a very very nice reward for an iron man. It is an item that is needed to complete certain clue scrolls and this is the only way to get the item. So I was really lucky here. After doing loads of clues and slayer tasks, it was time for my biggest challenge yet, getting the fire cape. On my first time at Jet, I made a very stupid mistake by not watching my prayer. So um, you gonna guess what's gonna happen here. Ouch. But guys, on the second try I succeed. I got the fire cape on an Iron Man. Well, that is it people, the end of the summary. In total, about 500 hours of gameplay all in one video. What I would like to say by making a video like this is that I really enjoy playing on my Iron Man account and that I have lots of plans for in the future. If you enjoyed the video, it would be really nice if you would leave a like or a comment. I spend a lot of time and effort into making this video and all the episodes and I hope I can get some appreciation in a form of a like, comment or subscribe. Thanks a lot, it really means a lot to me. If you would like to follow more of my progress, the only way to do that so far is by subscribing or checking out my YouTube channel. If you want to contact me in-game, feel free to join my clan chat. There's always nice people in the chat. My RuneScape name is IronNL. Thank you very much for watching guys and hopefully see you at the next episode. Bye bye.